Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today on Tips and Techniques, I'm going to walk you through how to trim a brisket. All right, so you just got home with your first brisket, spent a good 75 bucks on it or whatever it might be. And the first thing you need to know is how am I going to trim this thing before I cook it? So I'm guessing, hopefully, maybe you got on Google, asked it how to trim a brisket, and I popped up. So today, I'm just gonna walk you through the basics. Nothing is necessarily right or wrong, but over the last decade, I've trimmed a lot of briskets, I've kind of figured out what I like and what I don't like, so I'm gonna share that knowledge with you today. So first things first, we're gonna do a little anatomy of a brisket. Now, this is a whole packer brisket. It's got two muscles to it. The lean meat is down here on the bottom, sits like that. The fatty meat is this point muscle that comes up over the top and overlaps the bottom one. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna trim off some of this really hard fat. This stuff doesn't render out when you're cooking. Um, and then we're gonna expose some of the top of this point meat because this point meat has so much fat running through it that I don't really feel like we need much of a fat cap on it. Now this lean meat down here, however, I love to have a little bit of fat cap still left on that. So the, usually what I like to do first is I'll get rid of some of this really hard fat, some of the really big obvious stuff. And this stuff, you can even start to peel it out by hand. And we're just gonna take a nice sharp boning knife. I'm using a six inch, six inch curved boning knife. This is a Kangshan is the brand on this one. Uh, nice knife, but not super expensive. Um, there's also cheaper knives like the Victorinox. This is also a curved boning. That's just my preference. I like the curved shape. Uh, this is a much cheaper knife, but it's easier to put an edge on. So I'm just kind of digging into that hunk of fat that I know is not really gonna render out. And if you cut into this stuff, you'll see it's all white on the inside. That's all just hard fat. Now that hard fat doesn't necessarily have to get thrown away. You can chop this stuff down and throw it in a pot, cook it down and render if it beef tallow, which is great for cooking with. You can even make candles with it. Another thing I should mention is here I can see the entire flat muscle, which is the lean meat. Um, I consider this to be the bottom of the brisket and the fat cap side to be the top. So if I reference one of those, that's what I'm talking about. Now on the top, there's another section of a big wedge of fat that's in between these two and this little section that sometimes is called the mohawk because it kind of sticks up. Um, that stuff is probably going to burn up when you smoke it and just get crunchy and not really do you any good. So you can take that little bit of meat off as well. Mostly just fat and that little bit of that lip that sticks up. Next thing I wanna do is just kinda of square up the edges. A lot of times there's this kinda of gross gray meat around the edges from the packing process. I'll just take the smallest little bit of that off of there. And clean it up just a little bit. Now you also get a really good sense of just how big that fat cap is. Uh, we're gonna work that down to closer to like a quarter and a quarter of an inch eventually. Get rid of that gray meat. And then we've got this really thin edge. There's always a thicker edge and a thinner edge at the beginning or at, the, at this end of the flat. I kind of will just take a little bit of that off and then again, square up that side. All right, so once again, you got the point muscle on top, flat on the bottom. We're gonna start taking some of this thick fat cap off of the point meat. And the way I'll do this is you take a swipe at it. You don't see any red yet. Just poke it a little bit lower. And as soon as I just start to see that little bit of red right here, I know that I don't want to go any lower than that. So try to keep my knife nice and flat. I'll lift up to keep some pressure on the fat. And then just kind of work your way down this muscle, down the slope. Cut a little tab to hold on to, and then cut away from myself. Now the nicest looking strokes are the ones that are really long and smooth. You don't get those little jagged uh, saw marks when you're doing this, but sometimes you, you gotta do a little sawing to know where you're going. 
Um, if you're starting out on briskets and you haven't cooked these before, I wouldn't even sweat it right now because you're not going to be able to tell that much in the end. So one thing you can do if you need to flatten out your surface or even round out your surface is go ahead and lift on it from the bottom. That'll give you a little bit more control so you're not gouging in to another spot on the brisket. Now, so if you're wondering when do I stop trimming from the point and start looking to save some of that fat cap, well this right here tells you where the two muscles are combined. So there's this fat vein that runs in between the point and the flat. So somewhere right in this area is where we're gonna start to try and achieve that quarter inch fat cap on the lean part of the brisket. And actually you can see right there where that point muscle ends, that, that is the line. So as the, we see the end of that point kind of fan out down here, now I'm kind of looking from the side, and I'll spin this so you can see what I'm seeing, uh, so that we can tell just how much fat is on top of that lean meat. So that pink that we just brushed there is the end of the point. The flat meat's all the way down here, so this is where we're looking to get that fat cap to about a quarter inch. Now if you get to the point where you kind of gouge down a little bit and you see a little bit of red, it's not a big deal. Just stop where you are, reposition, and uh, move on from there. You're not going to fix it. It's not going to ruin your cook. You'll get better at this every time you do it. This thinner side usually has a thinner fat cap and there isn't much that you need to take off of it. Looking pretty good. So this is looking pretty good now. The uh, point's cleaned up. We've got a good fat cap going over here. I like the shape of it. Uh, at this point, I'm going to try and get rid of just a little bit of this extra fat. I'm, I'm kind of going above and beyond here. This is not necessarily brisket trimming of 101, but like I might shave out some of that. I might take what I can get out of this big old wedge of fat in between the two muscles. But again, if you skip this part of the process, it's not going to ruin your cook. We don't want to create too many sharp edges or things sticking out so that they will burn during that process because cooking a br brisket's a long process and this can really dry out over time. I'm pretty happy with that though. Let's flip it over. So again, any hard chunks that kind of stick out, we'll get rid of that. If I could shave this a little bit better, I might spend some time doing that. And then I'll typically kind of just clean up most of the fat on the bottom side. Um, but again, this is a little bit going above and beyond. If you don't do this, you're not going to ruin your cook. Much thinner fat on this side, obviously. Don't be surprised if you see some gouges. That tends to happen from time to time. That one's a pretty good one. They got it all the way through. I might actually just go ahead and clean that up. level it out. So bottom's cleaned up. We've gotten rid of the big chunks of hard fat. That's one of the things that I would encourage you to keep in mind. Make sure nothing's really sticking out that's going to get burnt. Uh, but other than that, don't worry about your imperfections. Just keep practicing at it. This is a trimmed brisket. We're done. There's not much to it. Um, you know, we've got this point meat cleaned up. Uh, some people like to leave that fat on there. Personally, I like to take it off because if you look at the sides of this thing, you can see how much fat runs through here. You don't need that fat on top to moisturize it. In fact, that's not how it works. It's the intramuscular fat that's going to make your brisket juicy. The only reason we keep it down here on the flat is because it's a nice textural bite. When you take a, a bite of brisket and you get meat with a little fat on top, that's enjoyable. So hopefully that explains why I like to trim the brisket the way I'm trimming them. So now that your brisket's trimmed, the world is your oyster. You can go a lot of different directions when it comes to seasoning and smoking your brisket. Uh, I just checked, we've got over 40 brisket videos on our YouTube channel. We've been doing this since 2015, so there's plenty of stuff for you guys to go check out, watch, try, find out what you like, find out what you love, find out what you don't love so much. It's a lot of fun.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.